My name is Jess Krieger. I'm a graduate student at Kent State University in the Biomedical Sciences Department. There are different applications to studying muscle biology and tissue engineering, and one of the main ones is for regenerative medicine. People have suffered from volumetric muscle loss due to diseases and injuries, and this is a way that we can start bioprinting organs to help those people and transform their lives. We can also use this research to find ways to grow meat in the lab, essentially. We wanted to examine the role of TGF-beta in skeletal muscle regeneration. And we also wanted to look at the impact of myofibroblasts on skeletal muscle regeneration. We also wanted to compare our 3D tissue engineered model to 2D models grown on cell culture plates to see if there was a difference between our results. There have been conflicting reports in literature about the effect of TGF-beta on skeletal muscle regeneration. Some studies in vitro have shown some results, and we've seen some different results in vivo. So we essentially wanted to elucidate the true role within our tissue engineered model. Fibroblasts are a connective tissue cell type. They produce extracellular matrix, which is like a protein glue that holds all of your tissues together. And they also play a role in wound healing. TGF-beta activates fibroblasts to myofibroblasts, and myofibroblasts help enhance the wound healing efficiency of the tissue. In 2D cultures, we found that TGF-beta completely inhibited myogenesis. So there were no muscle fibers that formed in the cell culture flasks that we grew the cells in. However, in 3D, we had the exact opposite impact. TGF-beta greatly enhanced myogenesis, and we saw very robust muscle fiber formation, very long muscle fibers that were arranged in parallel like you would see in vivo. We also found that when we compared myofibroblasts to fibroblasts, that myofibroblasts greatly enhance myogenesis when they're in co-culture with skeletal muscle cells in 3D. Low concentrations, TGF-beta has a very positive impact on myogenesis within a, a 3D context. This highlights the role of TGF-beta in playing a routine role in muscle regeneration. There are three main implications for this work, and the first being that we should try to transition from 2D culture models to 3D systems, such as tissue engineered models, because these 3D systems are more similar to what you would see in the in vivo environment. The second is that TGF-beta plays a very complex role in muscle regeneration. And while some studies have shown that it can play a negative role in muscle regeneration, can actually study TGF-beta within different contexts and find optimal concentrations to improve tissue engineering of muscle. Another implication of our study is that we can use myofibroblasts instead of fibroblasts to improve the quality of the muscle that we grow in the lab. By using myofibroblasts, we were able to grow uh, skeletal muscle fibers that were much bigger than in our control condition and were also organized in the same manner that you would see in vivo, where they were aligned in a parallel fashion. Also, by using TGF-beta, we were able to greatly accelerate the process of myogenesis. Myofibroblasts and TGF-beta signaling play a natural role in the regenerative mechanisms inside of skeletal muscle tissue. And if we utilize the regenerative tissue mechanisms in vivo, in our ex vivo models, such as with tissue engineered muscle, we can greatly enhance the outcome of the tissues that we grow. Ideally, this research can be used to improve meat manufacturing methods. At Kent State, we're working on growing pork and turkey and beef meat. And by utilizing these techniques, we can improve quality of the meat that we grow and essentially start moving away from a model of animal agriculture to a meat manufacturing model.